Greetings, everyone. It's Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Um, interrupting my normal podcast schedule because I have an interview with Christine White. She's given me updates on what's going on in the front lines of faith there in Washington, D.C., where the Supreme Court is hearing on something that affects this country very much, gay marriage. Um, she's on. The, I'm also going to include the link uh, wherever you hear this podcast of her page so you can follow the photographs. She puts up videos, too. Uh, as she does it throughout the day. And she's so kind enough to call me and give me an update. I really appreciate Christine. So here's the interview with Christine Weick on the front lines of faith at Washington, D.C. Supreme Court. But I'm sure I'm not nearly as tired as you. Oh, I tell you what. I had like two hours of sleep last night. I was up at 4.30 to make sure I was down there at 5.30. And, uh, oh, I said, I have 12 hours on my feet. (laughs) Wow. So... It was awesome today. Amen. You know, I was going through some of your videos, and uh, you you had a picture of the two older ladies, and you said, oh, I I watched that video from yesterday, and that laugh was very eerie. That was not normal. Well, the thing is, they're part of the court. They came out of the courtroom with the attorneys. I don't know who they are. That was kind of strange because a lot of people were doing interviews with them, so they've yeah. got to be part of that whole debacle. And I'm not familiar enough with all of the cases to know who's who, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so when they come out of the courtroom and, you know, and then they see me with my sign, and yeah. I put up a picture of them, and I had the last word this time. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, did you uh, did you yeah. feel scared? Didn't you? I mean, were you safe the whole time? Because it looked like. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. There was, in fact, there was a couple of times where I was surrounded completely with maybe by fifty people. I had one heckler today, which I have never, in all my time of sign standing, told someone to shut their mouth. <laughs> and this one I did. I had about enough of him. He was trying. He he knew the crowd was all on his side. Yeah. And every time I tried to explain something, he would run me over. And finally, I because the the rule with with street preaching is when you get a heckler, if he gets control, you're gone, you're done. Right. You know, it's no different in stand up comedy. You know, it's you get a heckler, and if the crowd thinks he's funny, he's gonna do his show. And and I just you know, hopefully I'll post that video up. It's on my body camera, and I've got to download all that stuff tonight, but. I mean, okay. I just had it to the point where I just told him to shut up. He's got cement between his ears, and that's why he refuses to listen to my explanation of what, you know, of how I feel that God is. Right. Uh, you know, and then he ended up just leaving, but it was like a half hour back and forth. And this is where you, you know, pearls before swines, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, he was not interested in the gospel, so... And, you know, in the meantime, you got like, you know, 20, 30 teenagers all gathering around because he's being so loud and obnoxious that, you know, they're drawn to that. And, uh, it, you know, hopefully I think I can put the video up and I do not think he got a good foothold with me. I kept right after him. So I had a blessing at the end. I mean, my feet were so sore. It's mm-hmm. like you know, 536 o'clock and I'm about done. And a couple other preachers were with me. We were down to like maybe three preachers at this point. And they were ready to go. And one of them says, you know what? I'm just going to call out to, there was a few tourists in the area. And he says, I'm just, if there's any believers out there, he says, let's finish this day of our preaching with prayer. I says, okay. So he sends out the word kind of with his voice. And a couple of tourists pull up. And, and then a man walks up. And uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm not good with faces. Okay, right. and he, he comes to me, and, and uh, you know we were kind of standing in a row. And he points, you know, comes to me and shakes my hand, and he says, "I want to uh, thank you for for the work you do." And I says, "Well, well, thank you." I says, "My name is Christine," and he says, "And my name is Jonathan Khan." Wow! And I just I held on to his hand. I says, "The Harbinger," and he goes, "Yes." And he says, "I'm Jonathan Khan." Wow! And I and I went. Your book has impacted me so much. I, I says, and you know, and I don't know what to say. And and he's, you know, he's being very humble. And and he says, well, I just want to say I appreciate what what you do. And I just went, 
and he says, can I pray the blessing over over you guys here? He says, can, can we pray and, and let me share the blessing? Th- I mean, by then, I finally registered. Get your video out. <laughs> I had yeah. 1% of battery left. Oh, man. And I said, Lord, please let me get this on video. I want to keep this. Amen. And, yeah, that was amazing. That was that, God's reward. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Be sure and share that. Yeah, I just did. I just posted that up um, now. That's amazing because I just finished his other book, The Mystery of the Shemitah. The Shemitah. You know, yeah. you know and I know, you, I know you know all this. When you had this Shemitah year, okay, then yes. you got the Harbingers, which these are factual things that happened. I mean, these are things yes. that uh, that are historically proven. And like when the the people in Congress or whatever were talking, they were actually uttering the words that were in the... Yes. And then you do the four blood moons on the feast days. I'm like, America, mm-hmm. this is it for America. I mean, I, I really think mm-hmm. what you guys are doing right now is it. we've got to change. I really feel that way. This is it. Yes. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, Oh, I, I said t- today was a whirlwind. I mean, um, Misty did quite a. I, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I did see Misty or not. I'm not sure. She called in, and we got an upload around 10:30 or 11 o'clock this morning. She, uh, yeah. Okay. It's on there. Yeah, and uh, but I don't think I caught up with her at all. I did a couple of times with the other street preachers, but they were busy. I mean, um, the crowd was really heavy around them, and every time they tried to speak, the crowd was yelling. So it was hard for them to overcome, but their loudspeakers were, were good. But I tell you what, the crowd got, you know, really vocal. And every time they'd speak, they'd start chanting. And it it was hard for them. You know, they were... You were outnumbered, they, right? They, um, Yeah, but we had one... I had one positive thing by me. There was a platform that someone had, that the, a group had set up, and they had speakers coming in. This was for the Christian side of a heritage uh, foundation and mm-hmm. and the director of American Families. Um, they had uh, maybe 30 speakers come in for two, two and a half hours. Wow. And they had an incredible sound system. But, um, yeah, they had some really good motivated speakers. And um, I think the daughter of uh, Rick Santorum also mm-hmm. spoke. So, I mean, they had some names up there, and then other ones I did not recognize their names. But, I mean, I was situated, because I got there at 5.30 a.m. I was one of the few that was there bright and early. You know, it's almost dark yet. And so I got me a good spot, and I took myself right at the corner of where the barricade was and the steps. So two sides of me, nobody could stand. Right. Um, I was, you know, I had that completely open and then there's the walkway. So right where all the plaintiffs and all the court had to go, I was right there. So they seen my sign as they walked up. Yeah. You, got, then, you um, got a lot of really good okay. footage, man. I was looking at it today. I mean, I was like, you, you did some panor- you did some 360 degree filming. Yeah. Did you figure yeah, out who the lady was? I got to my camera. I got to learn to tilt my camera. But anyway, go ahead. Only one of them was sideways that I've seen. I'm like, well, whatever. Nobody's going to care. But did, did you figure out okay. who, the, who the lady was in the gray dress? Because she looked like she was. No. Uh. And she must have been a part of, of the court because a lot of people were interviewing her. A lot of news agencies were interviewing her. And she was, I could hear, I mean, she was right next to me. I mean, right there. The mm. camera guy had to boot me over. So he he could get the distance to photograph her. Yeah. That's how close she was, and I could see her notes. Yeah. She was talking into the phone with her notes, and it's like this is so cool. She's going over the whole courtroom with somebody on the phone reading her notes, and I I don't know if she's part obviously part of the attorneys team. Mm. Um, I I don't. Maybe somebody will post it up there as to who she was. But I had congressmen standing next to me because somebody would be like, Congressman so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, that's Congressman so-and-so. Right. <laughs> and be right, right next to me. You know, and I wish I had familiar, familiarity with the case so I knew what congressman was who, but I don't. I don't follow it that closely. Yeah. And, uh, 
but you know, a lot of you know big names were dropped. What was really interesting, and I'm hoping to put this footage up, there was a priest with his clerical collar with a pink shirt on. Oh boy. With his suit coat. And all the gays were, you know, all the homosexuals were hugging him and he was doing the pictures with the men. And I turned on my body camera and I walked up to him and I said, um, sir, I says, uh, can I share something with you? He was sure, sure. You know? And I says, do you understand that it's better to have a millstone hung around your neck and thrown into the deepest sea? for what you have coming to you for misleading all these people. Mm-hmm. And he all met, oh, no, no, no. I said, read your Bible. I said, I think you've forgotten to do that or something to that effect. Right. And that part just angers me when you have these young people coming up to him. And he is, he's an older man. He was probably 60s, 70. Yeah. You know, and he knows better. And this is where I just, and you have these teenagers like, oh, 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 and oh, and it's like, Lord, this is the problem. The problem isn't intellect because you look around, creation cries out, there's a God. An unbiased person reading the Bible is going to come up with Jesus as Lord. That's just me talking, but there's so much evidence, you know? And yeah. it's not, the problem with man isn't intellectual, it's moral. Because people are trying to make Jesus bend to what their morals rather than trying to conform to what Jesus' words say. And that that's the problem. You know, you sound like you've got a lot of energy for somebody that only slept like three hours. <laughs> I, You know, I, I, I had to walk a mile mm. to the train station and then a half hour train ride and then standing on my feet for 12 hours straight. Um, on the pavement, but you know, it was such a day that he, it, it, it flew, it, it just flew. And right now I am rubbing my feet with my feet <laughs> Amen. and, and I'm, I'll be okay. You know, I mean, uh, I, I have great, great house with my feet. I'm just normal pair of tennis shoes. I don't need any support. My legs are fine, but I'll be back there again tomorrow. Okay. And the um, I did ask the Capitol Police that were there. I said, "Can I bring a chair? Is that allowed?" And they said, "Yeah." <laughs> Amen. He says, "Must be." He says, "We had uh, um, a, a big old bruja, big demonstration with uh, against the electric chair." He says, "Everybody had chairs." <laughs> he said, "So I guess it's okay to bring yours." <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And uh, he kind of had a laugh about that. And I said, "Well, I think if I'm going to be out here for two months every day, I am going to have to have a chair. I mean, to do it for nine hours." I could not do what you're doing. I'm tired, and I'm just listening to you. You know. <laughs> but you know, God <laughs> gives me strength. Like I said, he gives me these little rewards like he did at the end of today, and it was worthwhile putting out that extra hour to meet this wonderful man who wrote this book. Oh, at, man. Um, Jonathan Kahn, The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah. Yes. Yeah, dude, I am, like, all over that. That That's, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's, like, a really cool blessing. That, to me, is my Hollywood movie star. Yeah. You know, someone like that. You know, and then ask if he could pray over us or oh, with man. us. And oh man, it's like oh this yes please. You know, he did a little bit of Hebrew and a little bit of English. That was cool. Yeah. So. All right. Well, do you do you know what happened on the inside of the building? I mean, we heard a lot about the outside. <laughs> yep, I got quite a bit of slack. Yep, I got you know I heard a lot. You know, mm-hmm. from the I mean, interviewers were everywhere, and because I was right by the steps with a lot of these big name people I was overhearing a lot and there was a lot of positive I could tell from um the the good side yeah. <laughs> how you word that I don't know if it's the the defense or the the other um who's who on this um but I could tell they were like yeah the the judges seemed to ask very significant questions um I don't know which one it was, but it was uh, one of the judges asked, how come we didn't have gay marriages in Greece 2,000 years ago? (laughs) Right. I mean, I guess one of those had that question. This is now, Lord, please, just direct the hearts of of these judges. You know, he put them in power for a reason. You know, that's those are our authorities. Amen. You know, and something, you know, they, they are trying 
this again, this goes over my head politically because I'm not really involved on that end, but we have those restraining orders that I had pictures of yesterday. Well, what on earth uh, was that? That whole big back, they had like yeah. nine boxes of restraining orders. What was yep. that? It's 300,000 and counting. They said they're getting more all the time from 300,000 restraining orders to tell the Congress that they must act, that the judges cannot rule on this, that it's not their place. Wow. And that's why they feel they have enough signatures and enough there to present a bill to Congress to pass a law between now and when the court rules that they cannot rule. Right. So that's all in the mix, too. <laughs> well, you know, you know what's funny? If you, if you think of it, marriage is a religious institution. It's a Christian thing ordering by God. Uh, if you take if you subtract religion from it, there is no problem. I mean, you know, but now but the unfortunately for them, God ordained this, right? And then we have the mm -hmm. the free exercise of religion, and that's the First Amendment. That's definitely I mean, I figured that would be covered under the First Amendment. You you know what here's here's what irks me. They get into office, they put their hand on the Bible, right? Yeah. And then they raise their hand and they swear an oath to God Almighty, and then they try to rewrite the book they just swore on. <laughs> you know, come yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. I'll shut up. But <laughs> but I know you've probably seen the video footage of I mean the street preachers that had the high banners. Yeah. I mean these things went up what twenty feet up in the air, yeah. and those things ruled the landscape. I mean, they did. Um, many of the homosexuals had their equal flags um, and their rainbows. But those big, huge banners that went up, they were like the skyscrapers. I mean, it was just an incredible sight to see. And there was maybe, what, 15 of them, wow. you know, and they're huge, you know. And you got to admit, they got rough language on there. You know, it's hell and brimstone. Yeah, it is. But. It makes a point, you know, and these street preachers, they preach the hell and brimstone. And who am I to critique them if that is how God laid it on their heart? Yeah. You know, they don't pass out tracks. I mean, they they anger the people. They, you know, and the homosexuals were gathered around them and trying to drown them out. They were definitely offended. <laughs> they weren't. Yeah. And they need it to be. And I just use a different tactic. I just stand with my sign and I'm quiet. Well, you know, until I get a heckler. But, <laughs> you know, but it's just a different form of preaching the gospel. And I think we haven't heard any of that hell and brimstone for so many years that people think it's hate speech. <laughs> yeah, didn't, didn't you, ha you had a sign somewhere on your website, hey, uh, the truth is hate to people that hate the truth? Is that what you're Yeah, saying? that's on the back of my car. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was going to say I remember that from somewhere. Amen. Yeah, that's on the back of my vehicle. You know, and they really made an impact today. They had really good sound system and uh, you know, you could you could hear that the crowd was angry with them. You know, yeah. you could hear the hollering. And you know, at some point you just your heart breaks for them because they're just trying to teach the truth and these homosexuals will just you know, they'll be right in that preacher's face. I mean, inches yeah. from that preacher's face and screaming. I I, it, it is just unbelievable, the the hate from the other side. And But it's it's all part of the day for, for these street preachers. This is what they're used to. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you so long. Well, and I, I really appreciate you checking in with me. This is awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm sorry I couldn't do it during the day. And you uh, know what? If I had, I would have missed the picture with Jonathan Kahn. Amen. <laughs> Jonathan Kahn. Yeah. I would have missed it because right. I wouldn't have had enough batteries. <laughs> okay. Yeah, buy, buy some more batteries. We'll send you. Everybody send Christine money for batteries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Thank you, Conrad, for the opportunity once again to share. God bless you, Christine. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Isn't that awesome? She got to meet Jonathan Kahn, the author of The Mystery of the Shemitah and the Harbinger. Wow, that's so awesome. Anyway, I'm going to include Christine Mike's Facebook page link, and also if you want to help out, she has a You Caring uh, page. You, can, you know, it costs, She's doing this out of her own pocket, so I'm going to include a link to where you can help support her ministry. 
Christine is very humble about that. A friend of hers set up a page where you could support. A lot of us just want to get behind a ministry like this where she's actually on the front lines in these big these big decisions that are affecting our nation right now. She's right there in the middle of it, lifting up the name of Jesus. All right, stay tuned for more periodic updates from Christine and others. Misty Hodges at ConradRocks.net. God bless you.